fabulous people welcome to the channel for all the babes who create their own life trends my name is anastasia and today i am in greece and if you plan on traveling to greece and doing some greek island hopping then this video is definitely for you today i'm going to share with you everything you need to know about greek ferries all the information everything from a to z so stay tuned we're about to begin but before we do so please remember to smack that like button and if you're new to my channel and my vibe and the vibe of this channel resonates with you please consider subscribing all right fabulous people let's get on board Right, fabulous first thing to consider is how you will get from the place where you are staying to the ferries and please keep in mind that on some Greek islands there are just a few dozens of taxis so they're not as common as you might think and the same goes for public transportation on some Greek islands public transportation is more advanced than the others now, one quick tip that I have for those of you who plan on renting a car, I would recommend to talk to the car rental place and arrange a deal with them where, for example, you would drop the car to their rental place and then they will drive you to the port or the airport. That is an option and I've done it on many different Greek islands, including Santorini, Mykonos, Rhodos, and as I'm doing here in Naxos. The next important thing that you need to do is to calculate how much time Time you need to set aside to get to your ferry. Please keep in mind that you will need to arrive about an hour prior to your departure. So leave enough time for the road, especially during busy months like July and August. During the high season, there is often traffic on the road leading to the port and a lot of taxi drivers share with me that sometimes people get out of their cars and run with huge bags downhill just to get to their ferry on time. Now, I know a lot of you might ask, can't I just fly to the Greek islands? The thing is, most of the Greek islands don't have airports, and even if they do, and you can fly from, let's say, Athens to Paros, most of the time there are no flights between the Greek islands, so your best bet is to take a ferry. I personally prefer traveling Greece by ferries versus planes. You don't have to arrive hours in advance, pay extra for bags, go through security and wait at the gate to depart. With ferries, everything is quick and easy. The tickets are extremely affordable, you have a good selection of food and drinks, with the possibility of bringing your own food, and you have incredible views of the sea and the islands as you travel. One quick thing to note about the bags. You can and should store them as soon as you enter the ferry, instead of taking them up with you to your seat. Now guys, if you're wondering about food and drinks on the ferry, you can definitely bring your own food, drinks, snacks to the ferry, not a problem. Or you can take advantage of their bar area and here you will find sandwiches, pizza, wine, beer, juices. Of course, it's going to be more expensive for example, for three orange juices and one sandwich, we paid 15 euros. So it is up to you, but I just want to make sure you guys know that you do have that flexibility with food. Now, where do you buy tickets for ferries in Greece? When you decide to do Greek island hopping, there are definitely a lot of different ferry companies and routes to consider. I personally like ferryhopper.com, which allows you to see different routes, consider various options, etc. You can also buy tickets from a travel agency or individual ferry operators like Blue Star or Sea Jets directly here in Greece. I know you'll ask me if you should book your tickets in advance. I'd say if you're traveling Greece in July and August, yes, especially if you're traveling to popular Greek islands like Mykonos or Santorini. If you're traveling off season, I wouldn't worry about getting your tickets in advance. The only thing to keep in mind is that during off-season, Greek ferries don't run as frequently, so make sure to check your routes if you're traveling to Greece during the off-season. Now, which ferry should you take? There are two types of ferries in Greece. 
Slow ferries are bigger and more stable, so if you do get seasick easily, then it might be a better option for you. The only negative to slow ferries is that they do take longer to reach the destination. Now, the fast ferries will obviously get you there faster, but they're less stable and a lot of times you will not even be able to enjoy the outside, except when a ferry stops at a port to let people out. Another downside to fast ferries is that most of the time they don't offer the option of bringing a car with you. Also, please keep in mind that there are different class options to choose from. There is usually an economy option where you will not be assigned a seat, so you will have to find one in the coffee lounge area or outside on the deck. And of course, there are different business class options, depending on each ferry operator. But in general, those areas will have assigned seats, will be less crowded, and some of them will even offer a catering service. What type of ticket do I recommend? I personally believe it mainly depends on your budget and how long your ferry ride is. For short trips, it doesn't really matter much, but if it's a longer route and your budget allows, I would consider getting a business class or even a cabin. Please keep in mind that a lot of times ferries will be late. Anytime I travel by ferry, no matter the route, Paris to Mykonos, Santorini to Paris, they're always late. But then the boarding happens super fast. And if you're traveling off season when the weather is a bit unpredictable and storms become more frequent, ferries can be canceled. Finally, if you're wondering about Wi-Fi, most ferries unfortunately don't provide it yet. And once you're in the middle of the sea, most likely you will not have internet. So I recommend bringing a book or something to occupy yourself with. All right, fabulous people, now you know everything there is to know about ferries in Greece. And of course, if you still have any questions for me, then please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And before you go, please remember to smack that like button. And if you're new to my channel and my vibe, and the vibe of this channel resonates with you, please consider subscribing. And I truly hope to see you all in my next travel video.